Thank you for subscribing to this channel. This is a reading part C practice video. According to the paragraph, the guidelines for infection control require dentists to strictly abide by the rules set out within the document. This is evident in the sentence, each dental practitioner is responsible for implementing these guidelines in their clinical practice and for ensuring their clinical support staff are familiar with and able to apply them. Therefore, option A is correct. Let's look at the next question. According to the paragraph, option A is correct. The paragraph states that they must also be informed that they may choose to consent or refuse any form of treatment for any reason including religious or personal grounds. This sentence indicates that the option of consent ultimately lies with the patient. 
Option B is incorrect because the paragraph does not mention anything about patient information being confidential. Option C is also incorrect because the paragraph does not state that patient consent forms are a legally binding document. Therefore, the correct answer is option A. Let's look at the next question. The correct option according to the paragraph is option B. Assistance devices should be used over physically handling the patient. The paragraph suggests that ceiling hoist technology and air-assisted patient lifting equipment should be the first line handling aid considered by employers as they reduce operator and patient injuries. Additionally, the paragraph states that once it has been assessed that equipment should be used for safe patient handling, it should be made available and used even in situations where the patient and or family's preference is for it not to be used. Option A is incorrect because the paragraph states that overhead tracking should be installed in all new or refurbished facilities, but it does not say that all areas of the hospital should be fitted with overhead tracking. Option C is incorrect because the paragraph clearly states that the decision to use equipment for safe patient handling should be made after an assessment, and even if the patient or family prefer not to use the equipment, it should still be used. The policy does not give patients the final decision on how they should be assisted. Let's look at the next question.
The correct option according to the paragraph is option B. Mattresses are of standard size so may not be suitable for all bed types. The paragraph mentions that the size of the mattress must be compatible with other bed equipment and accessories, and it implies that there may be some situations where the mattress may not be compatible with certain types of beds. Therefore, option B is the correct answer. Option A is still incorrect because the paragraph does not mention anything about confirmation of equipment availability. Option C is also incorrect because while the paragraph mentions that patient factors must be considered prior to lodging a request form, it is not the main purpose of the notice. The paragraph's main focus is on the eligibility criteria for requesting a pressure mattress and the environmental and equipment considerations that must be confirmed. The correct option according to the paragraph is option C. They can potentially lead to patient harm. The paragraph mentions that the undisciplined use of smartphones can compromise patient care and that personal and routine calls should be minimized and kept as brief as possible. It also emphasizes the importance of avoiding sensitive communications within the hearing of awake or sedated patients. Therefore, option C is the correct answer. Option A is incorrect because the paragraph does not mention anything about a violation of patient confidentiality. While the paragraph mentions the importance of avoiding sensitive communications within the hearing of patients, this is related to patient safety rather than confidentiality. Option B is also incorrect because the paragraph does not state that smartphones are to be used only by the surgeon. Instead, it emphasizes the importance of minimizing the use of smartphones by all members of the surgical team and forwarding incoming calls to voicemail or the reception desk.
The correct option for the question. The main point of the extract on subcutaneous cannulas is to explain. Is A. The versatility of their design and function. The paragraph describes how a subcutaneous cannula is a small plastic tube that can be used to carry medication into a person's body, and how it has two Y-shaped arms, one of which can be connected to a syringe driver or infusion pump, while the other can be used for subcutaneous injections. The paragraph also mentions that a second cannula may be inserted in case of a malfunction. However, the main focus of the paragraph is on describing the design and function of the subcutaneous cannula. Option B is incorrect because the paragraph does not state that only registered nurses can use subcutaneous cannulas. While it is mentioned that the cannulas are inserted by a registered nurse, this does not necessarily imply that they can only be used by registered nurses. Option C is also incorrect because it only mentions the need for a backup cannula, while the paragraph provides additional information about the purpose of having a backup cannula. Specifically, it notes that having a second cannula can be especially useful if the original cannula stops working at night when nurses may not readily be available. Therefore, the main point of the paragraph is not just the need for a backup cannula, but rather the importance of having a backup cannula in certain situations. Option A is the correct answer because the paragraph mainly explains what a subcutaneous cannula is and how it functions, emphasizing its versatility by highlighting the two different arms of the Y-shaped cannula that can be used for different purposes.